this. All right, so yes, today we're painting the solar plexus chakra. I'm gonna pour my paint. We're using yellow. Yellow is the color of our solar plexus today. Our third chakra in this series. We're also going to use, oh, my studio assistant moved all my paints. We're also gonna use orange to give our chakra a little bit of a golden color. And then we'll have some white to bring out our chakra. And then just like I did with the root chakra, um, at the end, we can decide if we want to use some black to make it pop. It is kind of difficult to see the, um, the white against the yellow. As you can see here, I kind of had to go over it a lot of times. So the black outline there could help bring out um, that chakra, just make it pop against the background. So here we go, let's get started. So we're gonna start by painting our background. Um, we're gonna use our, oh, we've got our five brushes here. So just like before, whatever brushes you have for your background, naturally your biggest one is gonna be the best one to cover that background completely. Um, I prefer a bristle brush for covering the background. So we're gonna use this big old bristle brush right here. And then for whatever paint brushes you're using today, I would take those, if you're using acrylic paint, you'll wanna stick those in a water cup um, just to keep them nice and soft, to keep them from drying. So I'm gonna start with the yellow here. Checking that my mic's on. Last time my mic turned off unannounced. And I'm just gonna start to lay that yellow paint on to my background. So first things first is cover the entire background with yellow paint. So we're gonna get that all on there. Um, if you have a hair dryer, oh, I did not put enough yellow paint. If you have a hair dryer, it's good for you know drying in between layers. Um, sometimes when you're trying to lay on color, if you get too much paint on there right away, you can start to pick up paint the more paint you add if it's wet. So drying will allow you to add another layer on quickly without making a big old mess and picking up a bunch of paint. I'm just gonna start painting my fingers right off the bat. Waste no time. And then we've got our entire background covered. So that was easy, right? It's a nice yellow. Okay, so once you've got your entire background colored, what's gonna buy you a little bit of time to um, help you or to get that front dry is you can just start to hit your edges once that entire canvas is covered. And I like to paint the edges so I can hang it right on the wall. This is gonna be, you know, hung as a group all together. So I'm not gonna frame these. So this will just make it look a lot nicer and a lot cleaner when I hang it up on the wall. But if you wanna frame them, you can do like a gallery type thing. That'd be really cute. They had matching frames or even unmatching frames, crazy. And keep painting the edges, get it all covered. And then once I've got these edges painted, just so we can add a little bit more to the background. Maybe we can dry, or maybe, maybe this color's covering pretty good. So now that we've got that in there, um. On the original painting here, I do have a little bit of orange worked into there. And that's because this yellow right here is so bright, it's gonna be really hard to see that white on top of it. And also our solar plexus chakra um, is maybe more of a gold, right? Makes it a little bit more powerful because the solar plexus chakra is all about power. Um, it's all about 
feeling your inner power. It's about your confidence, feeling confident in what you do, taking risks, taking chances. So we're going to hit that with some orange. And of course, also because the chakra beforehand um, is our sacral chakra, which is orange. So they kind of talk to each other like that. You want to you wanna see a little bit of the previous chakra and the other one because they're not like these solid things that exist by themselves. They feed energy into each other. So they're more of an ombre, right? They have more of an ombre feel. So one speaks to the other one. So we're going to hit it with a little bit of orange now. So I'm just going to take my brush just with that yellow on it and just dab a little bit of orange right on the edges there. Not too much not a big glob. And I'm going to start from the center. And then I'm going to work my way out. So that wet on wet paint there, you're seeing it's starting to blend in already. It's not like a big target. I'm not painting a circle in the middle. I'm just going back and forth with my brush, using the broad side of my brush and blending those colors in together. I'm gonna to start to move to the edges a little bit, start moving that paint around. And also don't be, don't be too careful here. You wanna, this is the background, so we do wanna cover it with a lot of paint. So I'm gonna get a little bit more yellow, and I'm gonna start working some yellow right over that to further blend that in. There we go. And as you're painting, you wanna make sure that you're not seeing any grid marks. You wanna make sure you're not seeing any of the white canvas popping through, like maybe like little dots or little pinholes, um, because that is bare canvas showing through. You don't want that. You wanna cover the entire thing with paint, so don't be afraid to pour on the paint. Get it all in there, unless of course you're working with watercolors or something, then I don't know the rules there, but um, I'm sure something like that applies. All right, there we go, I'm liking that. Okay, so now that we've got our background on there. We could, it's pretty good. We could, you know, hit it with the blow dryer if we wanted to, but I'm liking the way that my paint is combining here. So I think I'm just gonna go into it with a little bit more orange. Just wanna see a little bit more darkness, a little bit more of that mustard color here. And if it's too much, once we go into drawing the chakra, we can always go back over. And um, if you see here, I'll bring it closer. See here in my original, I've gone over my oopsies, right? Cause I don't make a perfect line as soon as I lay it down. So I've covered over with yellow. So there's always opportunity to cover a little, make it a little bit more yellow, go over it. I also went on the sides there. Ooh, there, if you, oh, you can see where I made a little oopsies, put my petal in the wrong spot and I covered that. So there's always time to go back. All right, I like that. So I think, um, we're just gonna go ahead and take a little yoga break. Um, I'm just gonna do one pose and talk about it a little bit, just like we did before. Um, so with the solar plexus chakra, our solar plexus chakra lives just above the belly button. So that's gonna be in the same place. And if you're familiar, if you're familiar with yoga, if you've practiced for a long time, you might be familiar with the word Uddiyana Bandha, which is a lock that we engage when we're going to do something really powerful, like that requires a lot of strength. Um, so it's our core. When we say pull your belly in and up, that's engaging the solar plexus chakra. So 
So with that, let's go over to our mat and see what, then I have to move this, this entire thing back up. All right. So we're letting our background dry. So now I'm on my map and I'm going to use blocks for this because I want to show you this pose so that it's accessible to you. Um, shout out to Keto McGregor because watching her videos turned me on to Lolasana and I just couldn't get up off the floor for so long and it seemed so impossible. But watching her video, I learned that you could use blocks. And then also some of my teachers at Karma also have, I believe have showed us this pose with blocks before as well. So this, these blocks are going to help you lift up in Lalasana. So Lalasana, you're on your knees here in kind of like a, a hero's pose or Virasana. And then you push your hands down into the ground and then push yourself up off the ground. Now I've done this before. Um, it was in a workshop and it's not attractive. There's like a vein that pops out of my head when I lift off the floor. So we're going to use the blocks. Um, so if you have even a stack of books, Hey, use a stack of books, give it a try, right? It's fun. It's fun to, to kind of feel like you're flying. So Solar plexus, we're painting yellow. It's a powerful color, it's a powerful chakra. Um, the chakra has to be powerful to lift all that heavy earth energy up into the heart chakra. So it's a, it's a big space in between here and here. If you think of the lower chakras, they're kind of stacked on top of each other. You've got your root chakra, which is at the base of your spine, and then basically right on top of that and a little bit in front, is your sacral chakra. And then just over that is your solar plexus chakra, right over the belly button. So these guys are really like packed down deep. They're heavy. They keep us grounded. They're all about like who we are, what we are, right? So now we're going to go up into the heart chakra. So a lot of power to go up into the heart chakra to a place where now like you're not so much thinking about yourself anymore, but now you're thinking about everybody else, your family members, people close to you, those you love, your community, right? The bigger, the more open your heart gets, the bigger that group gets of people um, that you want to be with, that you want to exchange life with. So we're going to do a little asana to feel how powerful the sacral chakra has to be to make this space, to leap energy into this space, right? Okay, so with your blocks, so you can have it on this setting, this higher setting here. So they look kind of like bricks, um, this higher setting. And then if you want to afterwards, you can lower the blocks to the flat setting and then try that. See if you can come up or even go on the floor and try that. So let's try on the higher setting first. So we're gonna push down on our blocks, we're gonna engage that solar plexus area or that Uddiyana Bandha like I talked about before, belly in and up. You're kind of crunching down, arching your spine, just gearing up, right? Gearing up to explode. And then we're gonna push down into our blocks and hug our knees up. And we're floating, we're flying, all right? Come back down. All right, so now, Maybe we up it, we turn our blocks flat, and we push down into the blocks. So again, we're hugging our knees in, we're hugging our knees into that belly area, pulling our belly in and up, pushing through the arms, arching the spine, making yourself the tightest little ball that you can, hugging your feet in, woo! <sighs> All right, and then, we can give it a go, I don't know. I don't know if I should, but we're painting the solar plexus, so let's just go for it, right? So now we're all the way down into the floor. We're really gonna think about hugging it and feeling all that power. Her painting's drying, so we're just gonna do, go for it. So we're gonna push down into the floor 
and lift themselves up. And oop, there's a little light coming out of my, there we go. Okay. Whoo. That's it. That was a little asana. So now maybe you have a little taste of how much energy it takes to push up off of the earth, to push out of that earth energy. And now I've got to pick up my entire desktop back onto the table. So let's go. Again, tell your friends to like and subscribe to my channel so that I can use my phone for these live videos later, okay? A thousand subscribers, that's all right. So now we've got our background on, a little bit out of breath, so maybe if you have a drink, you can take a little sip of your drink or refill. All right. I've got tea today, the green tea. The child decided to wake up at six o'clock in the morning, so here I am, or maybe 6.30, maybe it was 6.30, maybe I exaggerate, but here I am. So green tea it is. Okay, so now for this, oh, I already had a pointy brush out. Oops, that's why you keep your brushes separate. Okay, so for this next part, just like we did before um, in our last painting or in our sacral chakra, in our um, root chakra, we used a bowl. So hopefully if you're doing your third painting or maybe your second painting, you can do this in any order. You have a bowl picked out because this is your main circle and you're gonna use this for every chakra except for our crown chakra, which we're gonna use a little bit of a smaller circle so that we can fit a thousand petals. JK, we're not painting a thousand petals, but we're going to, we're going to imply that there's a thousand petals. So we've got our bowl to make our circle and that's where it all starts. So we got our bowl, let's check our painting. It's still kind of wet. So if your painting is dry and you know what you're up to, you can start to map out your circle, but I am going to give this a little dry here. I'm just gonna maybe hide my mic so you don't hear that. Okay. Just a hair dryer, hair dryer. Gets your painting dry really quick. So if you're watching, if you're painting along, you can leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Or if you have any questions, like maybe your maybe your paint's doing something weird. So like I was saying, if you're painting along, if you have any questions, or even if you're not painting along, maybe you plan on painting along. Let me know in the comments. Um, I will try and troubleshoot anything you got. That's why we're live here so that we can hang out, so we can chat. Uh, so here we go. All right, so we've got our pointy brush out. Not any pointy brush will do. And even if you are using a small square brush, this actually gets a nice thin line on there. So even a small square brush would work. So we can work around anything you got. And that's why, ooh, almost dipped my paintbrush into my cup. So I got my pointy brush and I'm going into the white here. We're not doing a whole lot of mixing today with this one. Um, for our Heart chakra, we will do some mixing. So while we're here, if you are planning on doing the heart chakra too, we're gonna use green and yellow. So I'm using phthalo green in the heart chakra, but whatever green you have is perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna set my bowl in the center of my canvas. 
And then I'm just going to make sure that I have an equal space around all sides of my circle. And that looks pretty good to me. Maybe it's a little high, so I'm just going to lower it down a smidge. There we go. And then I'm going to go all around the circle or all around my bowl, my handy dandy bowl that I picked out for this project, all around the edge. On a little trick of the trade, these longer pointy brushes are great for making a continuous line. The shorter pointy brushes, they seem like they're going to be more detailed, like they're going to be easier to use to make long, thin lines, and they really aren't. You end up reloading and reloading and just making a mess. So I prefer, oops, when I have to make a long, continuous line, I prefer a long, pointy brush. All right, so our circle's on there. Um, our, do I remember? One, two, three, four, five. So our solar plexus has 10 petals. So that means we're going to split our solar plexus in half, um, not, not actually split it in half, but we're going to find the halfway point and we're going to know that on one side we're doing five, on the other side we're doing five. So now I'm going to take, you can either take your pointy brush or you can take your small square brush too. And just at the top here, I'm gonna find approximately the middle and just step back, that looks about right. And then I'm gonna go underneath approximately the middle, that looks about right. And then from there, I'm going to find the center on the other side. And the reason for that is because that is where my, um, my petal's gonna go. So on this one, my petals worked out to be about three fingers thick. Um, depending on the size of your circle, whether you're working bigger or smaller, you might have to do just kind of just like a rough calculation of how thick each of your petals are gonna be so that when you do one petal on this side, you're fitting two petals on that side of the same size. All right, so. I'm gonna do these middle petals first so I know that two petals are going on the other side. So there's one, and then directly across from that, there's the other petal. Beautiful, okay. So now on mine, I made these petals about four fingers thick, or four fingers long on the other side. So I'm going to do that. So depending, again, depending on the edges that you have, maybe you want to make really long petals. Maybe you want your petals to be short. It's yours. The petals, like the only thing that means something, well, I mean, the number of the petals means something, but the thing that we're being kind of precise about are the shapes within, because this is a yantra. Um, the yantra has its own, it's like a mantra, but a visual, a visual mantra, right? A mantra that you look at. So this has its own meaning, the thing that's inside of each chakra, but the petals, the number of the petals matter, matter, but the style of the petal, not so much because it's supposed to represent a lotus. So we're going to go ahead and I'm gonna go four fingers outside, make a dot just so I know where I'm going to end up with my point. And now I'm gonna make my petals. So the way that I made petals, if you watched one of the previous videos, I like to start with a frowny face and then end with a smiley face, kind of like a smirk to meet my little dot. So we'll go the opposite way here. We're gonna start with a frowny face again and then end with a smiley face. So that's how you make a fancy petal, but you can also make them less fancy. They don't have to have this little this little curve here. So frowny face, smiley face, frowny face, smiley face. And sometimes it's not perfect and we can always go over 
paint over if something gets really out of hand or looks really wacky. All right, so now from here, now that I have these two petals in, I know that halfway in between this dot and this petal is going to be how thick my other petals at the top here are gonna be. So I'm just gonna make a little dot at that halfway point. And then from the center of that space, I'm gonna go four fingers out. So that's my index finger to my pinky finger. And four fingers out. And again, frowny face, smiley face, smiley face, frowny face. Frowny face, smiley face, smiley face, frowny face. And hopefully that is very visible from whatever screen you're watching from. I mean, really, this is, this is almost from the classes that I've taught before, you know, like 80 people and I'm on this stage you know, kind of far away, you're probably having a better time seeing what I'm up to here. All right. And yeah, I mean, at some point, you know, you can just let go of all the measuring and just go for it, right? Once you have a feel for how your petals are shaped, how it feels to do it with your brush, now it's just freestyling. And sometimes you're, as much as you make spacing, your spacing isn't gonna be perfect, but that's the great thing about these chakras that have more petals is you can't, tell as much when they're uneven as you can for instance with the root shocker where there's only four petals and you can totally tell if one's bigger than the other these ones not so much this one's a little out of hand there we go and if one looks a little off to you you can kind of redraw it and then we i'll show you how we're going to paint over it or fix any boo-boos So feel free to go over any petals. Here we go. All right. So we have all of our petals in there. Um, let's go ahead and throw that triangle on there before we go back and start fixing and messing with the petals. Um, so in the middle here, we are going to, so if you have like a straight edge, I found this thing, right? Like I said in my first video, I don't know why I don't have a ruler. I don't have a ruler. <laughs> I'm an artist without a ruler. Um, but I found this thing. I don't know what it came from, but I've been using it. But in my previous video, I did use... I used my whole punch. So if you have a straight edge, something you don't mind getting paint on, um, use anything like the edge of a notebook, maybe an old cereal box, something. Just something to give you a straight line. So I'm gonna use this handy dandy thing that's become an art tool. And I'm gonna go to the top four petals or whatever you deem, any part, any. Anyone can be the top, right? We're working with a circle. So I'm gonna stick to where I started. There we go. So your top four petals are gonna be where you make those dots. So I've got, here's the top, the center. I've got one, two, three, four. So right here, boop, boop, is where I'm gonna make my line. So there and there. So I'm gonna go across with my straight edge. Boom, perfect. And now 
my bottom point for my triangle is going to be right there in between my bottom two petals. So boop. I'm going to take my straight edge and meet with that top there, that top corner, and go straight down. Same thing on the other side. And there we go. You've got yourself a triangle, making shapes. So now you can go back over that um, depending on the white that you got. I really liked my gesso. Um, this, I reordered some paint, or I ordered some paint, some acrylic paint to do these projects. And I'm not liking the white that I got. It's, I have to paint over and over and over, but we work with what we got, right? So I'm just gonna fix up that triangle edge there a little bit. All right. So now, now we're gonna fix up all our little, you know, places where we drew over. And we're also gonna add some, some more energy, okay? Because these, these chakras, they're energetic. They're all about energy. So we want to make them look like they're moving. And the more and more I do these, the more I really enjoy making that energy come through with the paint, like making it look like it's moving, making it look like it's full of light. Um, it's something I don't get to do often in the kind of painting that I do, like paint movement. So I, I've been really liking this. So now to do that, I'm going to go back into my yellow. And for this, since I'm gonna work into some small little nooks and crannies, I'm gonna use my small square brush. And go into that yellow. And really for any of this, you don't like, you don't really need to clean off your brush too much because we're not doing really separate colors. You can wipe off your brush so you're not like just globbing and globbing on paint. But we don't need to clean off our brush too much for any of this. Okay, so we're going to go into the, we're gonna start fixing. So right here, I'm seeing that I don't like that. So that's a little white spot right there. I'm just gonna paint over it with my yellow, start to work that in. And if your yellow is really transparent the way that mine is, you can mix in just a tiny bit of white into a glob of your yellow or into a spot on your yellow, not the whole thing. That's something that happens a lot. Um, sometimes you'll say, mix these two colors and somebody will put like the color right into their glob of yellow and you don't need that much paint and you're gonna end up using a lot of white to like make that color that you wanna make. So just take a little corner of your paint, not the whole glob, and just mix it off to the side there. And now I'm gonna go back in and now that's giving me a little bit more coverage. Maybe if I start at the end there, I'm getting a little bit of like a starburst or a, a um, ombre effect. I might have to move this table even closer. There we go, all right. Then you can even go in with a little bit of white right at the edge and really play into that, that starburst effect, play into that, um, that ombre, if you will. Yes. So yeah, now it's even kind of looking like a flower. I'm just gonna go into the center of all of my petals here and just clean up that center. Clean up those lines where I may have redrawn. And while my paint's wet, if you're doing that, that blended effect with the white, you wanna add the white to the edge there 
while the yellow paint's wet so it blends in. So yeah, I've been having a lot of fun doing these, doing these little test subject chakras. They get really wild, really painterly, less sort of graphic. And I like that a lot better. Because as you're painting, you're you're exploring kind of maybe how, how the color is making you feel, how the, the um, image within the chakra makes you feel. You can do a little bit of, just without even knowing, doing a little bit of self-study, a little bit of self-reflection. Or maybe it just feels good. Maybe it's just relaxing to paint. And sometimes when we're painting like pictures of people or pets, there's all this attachment that we feel to the image. And, and I've done it. You, we can have like really like negative self-talk um, to ourselves. Like when we're just, we're not getting something right. Like there's something wrong with the nose or something wrong with, you know, like it doesn't look like that person or it doesn't look like my pet. But when we're painting something like this, like a, something that's a little bit more free form, something that we don't have any, any feelings towards, you know, it's, it's just a, it's an image. It's just a graphic. Um, you can kind of let go a little bit more and just, just feel, feel good about painting. And that's what I've been enjoying about these. Just not feeling attached to what the outcome of it is. Because no matter what happens, it's a circle with 10 petals and a triangle in the middle. So it's always gonna be that chakra. So yeah, think about that while you're, while you're painting. How we're just here to paint, to relax, to take some time for ourselves. Maybe connect a little bit. Looking forward to a time when we can paint in the same room. Here we go. So I'm just going in with this yellow anywhere where maybe I feel like I can clean up an edge. And then also just, you know, take it into the center. If you've got a little bit too much orange um, in your painting, you can start to bring back that yellow by just painting over, using the shape of your brush. I'm gonna start going around the edge now, using the thickness of your brush to clean up the edge, but then like, why not go for it? Like add some brush strokes onto the painting as well, like into the painting over the background to brighten it up. And I'll mix a little bit of white here because I'm seeing that as my light changes, it's a little harder to see the details. So I'm cleaning up the edges of my petal, but then I'm taking some of those brush strokes out just using the shape of my brush and just dabbing back and forth, adding some more movement to that background, some more energy. I'm just bringing it all around the edges of my petals at some point here. So now that we're reaching the end, 
we're going to want to go back over this white. So I'm having this problem, depending on the kind of paint that you're using, you might not have this problem. I certainly didn't have this problem with the last ones. It's just this white paint is a little bit um, transparent and just needs some more layers. So you might not need to go back over. But I definitely think I'm going to. But we live, we learn. <laughs> So in case you were wondering what paint I'm using, I'm using Blick acrylic grade stuff. It's the economy stuff. So just really nice, especially if you're like planning on doing a lot of painting and you want to do like some quick paintings, just like try some things out. I like it. It's you know not too huge of an investment, especially since I want to do a bunch of these. I'll just pop it out. But yeah, it looks like that. Comes in a nice size bottle. And a lot of times when I'm painting, my daughter wants to paint too, and she's three years old and she goes through the paint. So I need, I need the paint to not cost a lot. <laughs> All right. Oops. That was too much white. Let me just go back over with yellow. No biggie. All right, so that is looking fun. Now, I do want to go back over with some white. And like I said before, another thing that we can do is we can add a little bit of shadow to this, um, a little bit, some black lines to make it look a little bit more graphic. And it's just also going to help that white paint stand out against that yellow background. So I'm just gonna go back over all my petals with the white paint. Maybe before you covered some things with the yellow that you didn't mean to. So this is a good time to go back over all of that. Oh, and this long pointy brush is just the best. All right. Boop. There we go. So for the black paint for this, if you have wet white paint on your um, canvas and then you go over it with black, the first line might be okay, but then you're going to start to make gray and then you're going to try to paint over it and over and over it. And before you know it, you've got a mess. So we're going to give it a quick dry. So that is that. Now, if you have black paint or you could use a Sharpie, if you have black marker, Sharpies work too. And I know some people are more comfortable making lines with markers. 
just a little bit more familiar. But if you do use a marker, make sure that your painting is so dry, super duper dry. So maybe you wanna wait till the next day if you're using a marker. Or if you're using watercolors, go for it. Okay, so just like I did with our root chakra, we're just picking spots and it doesn't have to like go completely around the whole thing or border every line. Just a little bit gives it like that embossed look that's really cute, makes it really pop. So I'm just gonna find a spot, maybe right outside of this petal. Hey now, I'm using my pointy brush, very important. And remember to breathe. Don't hold your breath while you're doing this. <laughs> it makes it better. It makes the line smoother. So inhale, exhale. <laughs> Give it a try. <gasps> yes. And also for that, and I almost stuck my brush in my tea. For this, you want to make sure that in between you're wetting your brush because see that that happens. And I mean, it's not super bad. Like it's not, but sometimes it bothers me. Hey, I like that. All right. All right, so the straight lines, those do make me nervous. So I can feel my hand shaking as I do that. And I don't think breathing is going to help. I'll just go across the canvas. So I'm going to take my straight edge. Boop. See how that goes? Okay, that's nice. And then the trick there. With the white, it doesn't matter so much, but you want to wipe off. You want to wipe off your straight edge in between each line because you're going to put it back down and then you're going to mark somewhere you don't want to mark. I'm just taking a little extra time. All right, not bad. So yeah, I mean, it's up to you. Like pick where, like how far you wanna go with this. Like really, I could just go all day. Just adding. Adding, subtracting. So if you watch this later on, let me know in the comments what you liked, if you have any questions. Maybe after this chakra series, what you want to paint next. I've painted it all, so let me know. I can come up for, with something for you. Or like if there's a different time that you wanna paint for the next ones, the chakras, I'm gonna be doing these at seven because that's what I said I was gonna do. But if there's another time that you like, let me know. All right, so I'm going to call this. I think it looks pretty good. You let me know what you think. And also like this, okay? Subscribe.